Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. Welcome to a little Blood Bowl roundup. As much as I would love to do the big Splod show every week, it turned out it took way too long. I don't have an editing team, I just got me, I'm afraid. And it was a case of, well, I could do Splodge or I could do like six other videos. <laughs> and I've got to cater to the channel, right? So I'm going to try and do a few roundups every now and again. So we're midway through the league, so now's a good time to take stock and find out what's been going on. So here are the current rankings at the end of week four of the TGS Blood Bowl League. We have my team, the only team with four wins, zero losses. Admittedly, I have had some of the less experienced opponents, so... It looks like things are only going to get rougher from here on in. Crendor behind with three wins and w one draw there, as you can see. Angry Joe, two wins, one draw, one loss. In fact, that's the same for Dodger as well as Side Strafe. They have all done pretty well in that regard. And then we have Jesse's team, who has one win and three losses. And then Team Beardman and Bebop Vox down to the bottom there with four losses, no wins. Team value-wise, my team is currently the highest value. What this means is that anyone that plays against me is going to be getting some fairly nice inducements that they can use to level out the playing field. And the least team value, well, that's Team Beardman, who lost one of their key players early on. They have one of the lowest team values in the entire league, which of course means they'll be getting inducements to help them out. So... Let's have a look. What's coming in week five? We've got the Completionist versus Side Strafe. That's Norse versus Human. That could be a really tough one for Gerard, honestly. I feel the Human team are more than capable of taking them down right now. We have the Wood Elves versus Bebop Vox. That could go completely either way. Elf on Elf is a very weird thing indeed. I believe Bebop Vox was considering buying a Witch Elf, which means he may have something that could do a lot of damage, but... It's going to be interesting to see who manages to pull that one off. We've had Jesse significantly increase his skill of late, and he indeed was able to pull off a win against the Norse team, as you can see there, 2-1. And then we've got the Lizardmen of Krendor's team going up against the Amazons. Again, could kind of go either way. The Amazons do have a very dodge-heavy team. They've been getting good level-ups, and Dodger's been doing well on the wins front. So this could be a pretty close match. I would probably give it to Krendor, but honestly, Dodger could certainly surprise. And then my team versus Angry Joe, which is going to be a real test for my team, I think. Angry Joe is a very good player. He's very experienced, and his team is well-ranked up. And they're also pretty damn tough to take down. So it could be difficult for me to inflict my injury heavy style on that team. Considering they have regeneration and just keep getting back up again. They also have some high strength stuff on the front line. Which is something I possibly won't be able to handle. So you can see the rest of the matches there going through day 6 and 7. Just to round everything up. Those are going to be my toughest matches I think. Going to be going up against side strafe at the end. That's going to be rough. He is really good. And also going up against Krendor in week six is going to be a test, certainly. Definitely a test. So look at the Hall of Fame and find out what's been going on there. Lots of different stats. Most experienced player currently is Ryong instead of Lil, Lil Skittles coming up in second there. But Ryong with 25 star player points. He's had a lot of touchdowns in this particular league. I believe he also got MVP at one point. Also, Lenok is there on the table as well. But we have two Krendorian players pretty high there. Admittedly, only two of them. I would have expected a few more, maybe. But you can even see some unexpected results here. Stuff like Fian Lu from Epic Maneuver is actually on 10-star player points right now. It's pretty high. Panthro from the Bamazons up there as well. And then you've got John Kimball there from Sigmar Strafers. Best scorer is currently Young with six touchdowns, which equals Lil Skittles, actually. They're both doing pretty well in terms of their touchdowns, which is why they're both pretty highly leveled up. But you can see Young actually has more player points as to why. Well, that's probably due to either getting an MVP or doing some damage. I'm pretty sure Young has actually hurt somebody badly before. So as a result, he got some points from that. So he's doing a little bit better there. We've also got Lenok, who is actually a Chaos Dwarf. So I think he's a Chaos Dwarf anyway. So he's actually on the scoreboard for just as planned there and Tal Sealer has managed three touchdowns as well as Geralt Whitefur who is of course the werewolf for Angry Joe's Hollywood Hor Horrors <laughs> Angry Joe's Hollywood Howers I don't even know Angry Joe's Hollywood Horrors deliberately made that tricky to say that's a werewolf he's very much their ball runner Let's go on and have a look at some more Hall of Fame. Best thrower, Stanley Goodspeed from Sigmar Strafers. He's actually been playing a throwing game. Successfully three passes. This has not been a very positional league, as you can see. There's actually only five players who have ever succeeded in a pass in this entire league so far. And three of them are actually in Vox Force, which is good because that means they gained a lot of points from doing that. And we've got Bebop Vox utilizing the agility four of his team very well. 
unfortunately, the other Agility 4 team in the league really hasn't been doing that. Yeah, so everything else, nothing really going on there. The only person to ever intercept is Dirty Dave, formerly Double D of the Crendorians. Only successful interception in the entire league so far, as you can see right there. Most violent player, Lenok, has caused four casualties. I believe at least one of them was a death. In fact, as you can see, we're pretty violent here. Although, note the violence coming out from the human team. Jack O'Neill, who I think is their ogre, as well as TLC. Both of those guys inflicting two casualties each. So the human team surprisingly bashy. They're going for a bashier play style than what I've seen. Humans are very flexible. So they can definitely do things like that. Also, Crandorians have inflicted casualties. The Saurus on the front line, very strong. Logan Blackfang of Angry Joe's Hollywood Horrors. As well as Corbin Dallas of Sigmar Strafers once again. Best runner goes to Lil Skittles with 230 yards run in total, followed closely by Ryung and then Geralt Whitefur of Angry Joe's team. And then Talsila of Epic Maneuver. Evidently, we've got the Wood Elf team able to run the ball, but not necessarily able to score. Tends to happen. Best thrower, Stanley Goodspeed, once again from Sigmar Strafers. I've barely even tried. I think I've succeeded in one throw. As you can see, Mia managed to pull one off, but everything else mostly in favor of that. But also some pretty successful throws here in terms of distance from Team Beardman. Lots of survivors. That's really not a useful stat at all. Best killer. Both Lenok and Crank are the two players to have killed someone in this league so far. No one else has actually inflicted a death up to this point. And then we've got Best Receiver. In fact, Vox Force and Sigmar Strafers both proving that they are pretty good at throwing and catching. We've got Amp, the only player in the entire league, having to successfully receive two passes up to this point. And it's unsurprising because Vox Force actually has a player with Dump Off. And dump off is a skill that allows you to throw the ball before your ball carrier gets blocked, which means a lot more throwing is going on with the Vox Force, and their strategy is based around playing keep away with the ball, which has been relatively successful for them so far. Vox Force is not doing that badly, but of course they are still bottom of the league, so even though they haven't been taking that many casualties, yeah, it's been pretty rough for them. They have been scoring touchdowns, though, and they have been earning star player points. So let's have a look at my team. And I'll show you what's been going on because, of course, you see my team value has increased significantly. So, can I have a look at the level ups? Quite a few of my guys have got levels up. First things first, I've added a new player, Big Skittles, making it rain blood. That is Bull Centaur. I actually intended to add him in week four, and I forgot. Or it's not, I didn't actually forget. It's just that for some reason, Blood Bowl didn't register my new player on the server. So, I actually went into my match with Vox Force without my Bull Centaur. I have a feeling things would have been a lot different. Things would have been a lot rougher for the elf team if I'd actually had this strength four guy. A bull centaur is a real beast. He's an expensive player. You can only have two of them. He's a weird one because he's a very fast player, even though he only has movement allowance six. You might think, well, he's not fast. He is because he's got sprint and sure feet, which means that he can very safely do a lot of go for it rolls. He could go nine squares and the chances are he's not going to fall down. It's very unlikely, especially if you have a reroll available. Sure feet means that if you fail any one of those rolls, you get to re-roll it. So you, chances are you're going to be able to move nine squares every turn with this guy. Pretty hardcore. He's also got strength four and armor value nine combined with thick skull. He is an excellent blitzer. He's a good ball carrier if you can get the ball into his hands. The problem is, can you? Because he's only got agility two, which means he's terrible at catching and terrible at picking up the ball. And honestly, when I level up these guys, I usually get at least one of them with sure hands so that they're better at picking up the ball. And if I get the option to upgrade their agility, I absolutely will. Aside from that, they're excellent blitzers, very, very strong, add block, add tackle, add stuff like break tackle if you want a ball runner that can very easily get through tackle zones. And you can turn these guys into pretty much whatever you want. They're very, very cool. I like them a lot. Unfortunately, I'm only going to get to play him in three more matches in the round robin and then potentially the playoffs. So... He doesn't have a lot of chance to level up. I'm hoping to get at least two levels up with him and then maybe get block and possibly sure hands. But we'll see. Other levels up. Well, as you can see, pretty much half the Chaos Dwarf blockers have been doing pretty well. Let's order by level and we'll see who's actually leveled up. Ryung is currently level three. He's got sure hands and block. Not really great roles, honestly. It would have been nice to get something that wasn't a general skill, but sure hands and block are really, really good because that means that it's unlikely, or at least less likely, that you can get the ball from Ryong. You can't strip the ball from him because he has sure hands. He's more likely to pick up the ball because he has sure hands, and block means he's less likely to fall over, and he can actually be pretty good in a fight as well. Chaos Dwarf Blocker, level 2, guard. Guard, guard, guard. All the guard. 
two of my Chaos Dwarf blockers have leveled up so far. I've given them both guard. What guard allows you to do is to assist in an offensive, even if you're in another player's tackle zone. That means you almost always can get two dice blocks on a line, which is really, really good. Yeah? Tackle zones cancel out your ability to assist in certain circumstances. Guard prevents that from happening. So you get more two dice blocks, you get more successful blocks. A lot of my Hobgoblins have got levels as well. And I've added block to both of these guys, simply because I didn't roll something cool like an agility skill. Unfortunately, hobgoblins don't really do that well on the skills front. You can see that general is their normal. And to get agility, they have to roll a double. In fact, any other skill, they have to roll a double, which really sucks. It's very unlikely that you roll a double on a level up. It's statistically unlikely, but it can happen. So that means I've got a lot of general stuff, which means I just go for block, because block is just the most solid skill that I can give to my players. And suddenly, that hobgoblin becomes way more handy in a fight. He's way less likely to fail in a blocking action. Now you'll see my fan factor has increased to 9, which is doing really well because obviously I've been winning matches, I've been doing a lot of damage, so my fan factor is really high, which allows me to influence some kickoff events as well as the amount of money that I get at the end of every match. And I finally added an apothecary. I've kind of been running without one up to this point because it's... It's been fairly safe for me to do that. Chaos Dwarves don't take a lot of damage. Hobgoblins, on the other hand, they can. And now that I've got a very valuable player in the form of Ryong, I don't want him to die. So I've kept an Apothecary just to make sure that that does not happen. So this is what my team currently looks like. It's pretty menacing. He's doing pretty well. You'll notice Ryong is up to the top there. He actually has a new spiky hat because he got to level 3. So... Every time you level up to about level 3 in this mode, it does upgrade the appearance of your character. And I believe level 5 or a bit higher than that gives you a second upgrade as well, which is pretty sweet. It doesn't actually affect you in any way, but it looks pretty cool nonetheless. So there we go. That is the current roundup of the TGS Blood Bowl League in its current state. We have three more matches to go before the round robin ends. As you can see... The, co the two teams that are very likely to go into the playoffs right now are my team and Krendor, but there are four spots available in the playoffs, so there's really anything to play for now. I've played probably my potentially easiest opponents, and now I'm going to be going up against my harder ones, so there's potential for losses there for me, so I could definitely go down. And if Angry Joe wins the next three matches, of course, he's going through. So there's there's everything to play for. Obviously, these guys are the most likely. We could see a big comeback here from Jesse. He plays against Bebop Vox, which is definitely a good match for him. And he gets some of the easier matches going forward. He's kind of been beaten on up to this point. So Gerard is in a pretty bad way. And Bebop Vox, Bebop Vox is playing a lot better now, I've got to say. He's playing really well. But I have to wonder if he's going to get the opportunity to really do an awful lot with his team. And if we were to look at what he's exactly going to be playing against. He's got to go up against Jesse, which, you know, could really go either way. And then he goes up against the Completionist. That's probably going to be a win for him because his team is doing a lot better than Gerard's right now. And then he goes up against Angry Joe, which could be pretty rough. He's actually been training with Angry Joe. And I saw in my matches with him that he's got a lot better. So, yeah, he, he could definitely come back. It would be pretty tricky. I mean, obviously, he's only got three matches. Even if he wins all three, he can't get to the points value that I'm currently at. But he could definitely get in the top four, depending on the results of Angry Joe. Press hard to continue and side strafe. So, still everything to play for there. And we will, of course, keep you posted on what's going on with the matches in the Blood Bowl League. If you want to watch all the week four matches, it's up on the screen right now. Click the button, and I will take you to the week four matches tell you exactly what's been going on there so if you missed any of that then by all means go and catch that blood bowl action thank you very much for watching folks again sorry that i can't do splodge anymore it's just it was too big a task it was too big a project i couldn't do it myself i'm really sorry i bit off more than i can chew hopefully you enjoyed this roundup regardless thank you very much for watching and i will see you next time